Well, hello there, and I hope you're well. My name's Stephen Burney, and I'm the author of the Tribulation Soldier series. And this is only the second in a little line of videos we're doing just to let you guys know all about the Tribulation Soldier series. And it is a big series, you guys. You know, 16 ebooks, 2.5 million words. Something I've been writing for quite some time, you know. We've got four books out already. You know, we always want to have that four sort of out and ready. Um, you know, before anything sort of move forward, you know, just because it's such a such a big series you know but of course with that big series comes a big social media platform you know and not only just the social media platform with like youtube and, and all that sort of stuff you know but some information videos like this about the tribulation soldier because it is a huge huge series so last time i basically just gave an overview of the tribulation soldier and about who we are and you know, those various little bits and pieces like, I, I don't tend to rehearse, you know, I tend to sort of grab it on and just uh, hope for the best sort of thing, you know, it's just the way I sort of do things. But I did say in the last one that, um, you know, for a lot of the storylines, we basically use either our own experiences or the experiences of those kind of close to us, you know. And it was a decision I took very, very early in the Tribulation Soldier series was to not read any other fiction. You know, nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing, you know. And the, the whole idea behind that was to, to try and make the, the storyline as pure as possible, you know, even though it's fiction, but to make it very real and authentic from real situations, you know? So I thought tonight that's what I'd go for, you know, well, this is just only the second and quite a few of these videos really. And I just thought I'd share a little bit about my background and about myself and Sharon's background, you know? It's, it's had its ups and its downs, it's certainly had its downs at times, and, been very colourful here and there, you know, so uh, I just really hope you enjoy hearing about, you know, who we are, and hopefully what it will do is uh, give you an idea of the, the influence that goes into the Tribulation Soldier story. Right? So guys, I hope you enjoy, and like I always say, if you want to know more about the Tribulation Soldier, the best thing to do is to go to our homepage, there we've got a site map video, just of me, a very brief video, sharing all the features of the website, and a little bit about the Tribulation Soldier series. I began the last video with the, the Tribulation Soldier saying, you know, but where do I start? You know, it was that sort of long ago and, uh, you know, been a lot of work ever since and stuff like that. And it's kind of the same with this sort of life that I've, I've led so far, you know. And, um, you know, it has been quite colourful in a lot of ways, you know. Pretty mundane in others, you know. But, um, you know, like I said, I hope this just gives you that sort of idea of where I come from and, and why the storylines are the way they are, you know. So, I mean, basically, you guys, you know, I, I basically grew up in probably just you know, a normal street, I suppose, you know, in the UK, growing up in the 80s and stuff. Ours was particularly tough, I'd have to say, though. You know, it was, it was fine during the day. It was one of those places where you could leave your doors open and stuff like that, but phew, you wouldn't walk around there at night. You know, you, you just wouldn't do it. It was one of those streets, and of course... You know, back then, the big issue we had in, in our sort of society at that time was drinking. We were Scottish, it's just, you know, it, it's a part and parcel of being Scottish was the, the drink, you know. And all the other stuff that goes along with it, you know, the, the various things that were going on in the street that you, you maybe really not, shouldn't have seen when you were sort of six or seven years old, you know. But the other side of that coin, guys, you know, it was it was, it was was a great street to grow up in, you know, all the, the neighbours knew you and... You know, you spent time with neighbours. You don't really see too much of that anymore, you know. But our street was quite tough, you know. The, I mean, we're talking the 80s. And there were still people in our street hunting for food to sort of supplement, you know, their, the, you know, the great uh, rabbit and stuff like that. And, of course, that's what I, you know, I really scored there. You know, we used to get with the, you know, the lamps with the dogs and the ferreting and uh, fishing, but of shooting, stuff like that, you know. So, you know, that was all good, but... You know, some of these guys really had to do this, to, like I said, to supplement their diet. So I kind of basically grew up around that big, it was a big drinking culture, you know. So it was no surprise getting into the teenage years that you start drinking very, very early. But just before that, about when I was nine years old, I'd uh, given my life to, to Jesus, became a Christian when I was nine years old. Had quite an experience as well, but, you know, we got into the teenage years and it just seemed like, you know, I just didn't have the courage to say, go forward in that, you know, and the, the lure of drink and, you know, smoking, being with my mates and playing football and, uh, you know, riding the bikes and stuff like that, you know, field bikes and, you know, that, that had my interest, you know, and uh, that really began to drag me away from something I actually really loved. 
But I think what really sort of caught me, which I think catches obviously a lot of people, was the, you know, the nightlife, the pubs and the clubs, you know. And it was something we really got into in quite a big way, you know. It, it really was. And I can always remember my first experience. Of going, uh, my, 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 friend's, my friend, his dad had a nightclub. And uh, we used to start going in there, you know, we're only about 15 or 16. And uh, the music, the, the atmosphere, the people, the girls, phew, the drink, wow, you know, this was it for me. And I think I fell in love with it almost straight away. And of course, you know, with the, the pubbing and clubbing comes everything else with it, you know, the the, the drinking, the drugs, you know, the, the womanising and, and all that sort of stuff, you know. But for, for some reason, I seem to go headlong into that, you know, where, you know, there's friends of mine that were, became drug addicts and various things. There's friends of mine that went to university. We were almost like somewhere in between, you know, where... You know, we, we were quite smart people, really, but just this hold of the drink and nightclubs and stuff was, was really quite something, you know, especially for me. And, you know, thankfully, we never really got into drugs in a big way, although, you know, away for motorbike rallies and stuff, you know, you'd, you'd take something so you could stay up all night and stuff. But I just never really liked that feeling of not being in control, you know, and I just felt like I knew where I was with the drink. And plus, you know, a lot of my friends were getting into the harder drugs about this point, you know. You know, whereas we asked, it was always what we called dubs, you know, joints and stuff, like speeds and ecstasy and stuff like that. But it started getting sort of worse and worse. It was almost like this area finally began to catch up with the world when you were actually starting to see cocaine and heroin and, and stuff like that. And really, you know, when I, when I saw these things, it just wasn't for me at all. Unfortunately, it was, it was for a, a few of my mates, though, you know, and um, some of them got, you know, real addicted. Uh, two or three, I'm sure, I think it was maybe three of people I knew died, you know, overdoses or, or whatever. So it was never something I really wanted to hit hard, you know. But the drink, whew, different story, you know, absolutely different story. And to me at that time, drinking was just the thing. And I think, you know, at, at its height, I suppose, you know, you'd be clubbing on a Friday and Saturday night and in the local pub during the week playing pool, you know, and, that, and that's just what you did. And, um, you know, but I think probably my biggest vice in that particular time was womanising. Just real womanising. I just always had this absolute sort of view towards a woman as just being the thing, you know. The, the, you call it sex, drugs and rock and roll. I would have went with sex first, you know, that was, that was my thing. And, um, you know, well, me and a few of my mates, we, we made a pretty good career out of it. One that I was extremely proud of at the time, certainly not so proud proud of now, you know. But basically, guys, it was different. It was different women all the time, um, you know. A lot, of, a lot of the 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 young women that were out with us at that particular point in time, I mean, they they were looking for mostly the same thing, you know. And, and it just it was what it was. So of course, in between girlfriends, you know, these sort of short relationships, you know, you, you were free and you were just seeing whoever you wanted and going to parties and partying, you know. And so one of the things that was always in our favour as, as my friends is we're always very popular people, you know. We're always very popular. Most folk knew us. We knew the barmaids and the bouncers and the pubs. and You, know, you, were, you were in a community, you know. And we were always sort of known for the ones to be a good laugh and to have parties, you know. It was, it was our house people came to. It was, it was our flat that people came to a bit later, you know. And, uh, you know, obviously being popular was thoroughly enjoyable. Yeah, so we were the guys with the, uh, you know, the fast cars with the, you know, you'd hear the music, boom, 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 boom you know, as you go past. Be sitting in the car, you know, up in the high street and up and down and up and down and up and down, you know, and then taking the girls out and doing, you know, broadsides and drifting and stuff like that, you know, to show off and just, you know, just all the sort of usual stuff as it were, you know. But again, this, this woman addiction sort of went quite deep for me, you know, and um, something I just, it just, controlled me you know it really just controlled me it was just so good you know and there was just so many different shapes and sizes out there and uh, different types different personalities you know and that just seemed to be the draw and um, I think thankfully I don't think I hurt many you know I think I was the I was the one that normally got dumped you know and tended to be with, with women that were way out of my league anyway you know but you know yeah there was two or three I think that I, I hurt you know, quite badly and have apologised since and, you know, things like that. But, um, you know, it, it was a past I was extremely proud of and not now, 
you know, certainly not now. And I always say this, you know, if I could have done my life differently, I would have, you know. But, you know, I'd never sort of speak down upon the friends that I had at that point, you know, who are still sort of friends now, you know. You, they're great bonds, absolutely great bonds, you know. Um, it's just a shame it was under those circumstances. But it was coming to a point in my, in my early 20s, I think, you know, where I just, I was, I was almost already had enough, you know. I mean, can say 24, 25, you know, for about eight years, when I think about it, I've just been drinking every weekend. And, you know, that's where all the money went. I either went on the car or drink, and that was it, you know. And I was getting to the stage where I, was, I just wasn't progressing in life, you know. I'd been to college, you know. That's where I met Sharon, by the way. I'd, I'd, been to, I'd been to college and things like that, but... You know, I was becoming really discontent. I, I really, I was having enough of this whole life, you know, as you do. I certainly wanted to step down from the drinking. I, I'd really had enough of relationships that just went nowhere. You know, I wanted something, something real, you know. So I was very discontent at the time. So, you know, during that time when I was at college, I spotted this, uh, I spotted this uh, blonde, but lovely glasses sitting on the, the table. And I knew her, she was a, she was a friend of my sister's. So I thought, I'm going to go way across and, and see her. And as it turned out, Sharon, who's my wife now, she'd, um, she'd made a real mistake in her teenage years and got married and you know, had a kiddie and you know, the, the marriage only lasted a couple of years. And uh, she moved back up to Scotland. And she was really, you know, basically herself, having her, you know. But um, I was really taken by her, you know. And I could see that she wasn't like the other, you know, young woman at the time and you know, not that there's anything wrong with it, young women of the time, it's just, you know, they weren't wanting to settle down, I was, I was really at a stage where I wanted to, you know, and here I met Sharon, and at that point, Sharon was really, I think, looking for the same thing, you know, it had gone all wrong, that bell you're hearing, by the way, is Little Bubbles, he features in some of our YouTube videos, but um, he just came in, he's got the one of those little bells, because they are the killers when it comes to birds, but with the bells, psh, that's it, so sorry if I, distract you at all but yeah she was she was looking for sort of the same thing you know to, to sort of settle down and i mean before long i mean we were going out with each other and within about three or four months we moved in together really really ill-advised everybody said you know what are you doing and then i remember chatting to my mum you know before before just before i was leaving to actually go and live there that night and i remember saying to her i, I know this is the wrong thing but it's something i've got to do it's really quite strange for saying that, you know. So, of course, you know, when Charlie and I sort of got together, she was part of the, the bike club, the motorbike club. An actual back batch biker, the, you know, the real thing. My brother-in-law was the president of the bike club. My sister was the obviously part of it as well. But she was looking to settle down. And, um, you know, once the honeymoon was over, you know, moved in and all the rest of it, you know, we started having problems really from the get-go. You know, we just seemed to have... So issue after issue, you know, we, we genuinely loved each other. And I, and I say that right now, there was genuinely a fallen in love thing that had happened. But boy, we were just terrible together. I mean, really, really bad. Very, very bad. And it's, I came to the point uh, a lot of those times where, you know, people like my mum and dad would say, so are you and Sharon on this week or are you off this week? Are you coming home this week? Or are you, you know, it was just that bad. And probably about a year in that was us was split. You know, it was, it was really quite bad. And at that point, Char wouldn't, wouldn't mind me saying, she, she slept by another guy that particular weekend. And uh, we got back together later, but that, that, was, that was extremely hurtful. And I think that anger, you know, was, was always there, you know. And basically, guys, we were in a relationship where we were just two damaged people. You know, that, that's just what we were. Immature and damaged. And really, we just set about damaging each other, you know. And... You know, it's it's very soon, you know, I was really back to the partying and the clubbing and the drinking and, and stuff like that. You know, I just I just wasn't content with, with what we had but but boy I knew we were in love. You know, I, I knew it, I knew we were, we were sort of meant to be together sort of thing, but I just couldn't make it work, you know? And things got really bad at times, guys. I mean you know, people used to say to listen to our arguments. You know, if you look at some of the, the motorbike vlogs, you'll see me pointing up at one of the old flat, the, the old flat that we had when we were, when we were students, you know, and, and that was another old rough area, actually. But, you know, the neighbours would say, boy, oh, boy, you used to really at it last night. And we'd be drunken arguments. 
I mean, I remember once punching the door right off its hinges. It was just that bad. Things would get thrown, you know, real, real, you know, real bad stuff, you know. And it just seemed like we just couldn't, couldn't get there. And we took this holiday to Gran Canaria and the Canary Islands. And I think with work and college and everything stripped away, we sort of saw the relationship for what it was. And it was just a disaster. I just, I was just like, I wanted out of this, you know. But at the same time, there was just that pool. You know, there was just that pool. So as a remedy, I thought, well, it's about time I bought a house. You know, and I was, was very young for buying a house at the time. It's the one you see here. And um, I thought, you know, the change, coming away from that flat and having our own place and, you know, things being a little bit different, you know, that things might work out. But guys, you know, it, again, you get into the honeymoon period, you know, guys were all coming around with big parties and, and just going crazy, you know. And, and again, it just, you just got back to discontent again. And before long, Charm was just, she'd had enough, she was leaving, and that was it. And it was really, I mean, it was an awful time. You know, you guys that have been sort of dumped before or split up or, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's not good. It's it's really, really bad. And, um, you know, but at this particular point, I thought, you know, goodness me, it's been, it's been like three, almost four years, you know. I, I love her, but what on earth are we supposed to do here? I mean, really, what are we supposed to do here? So we split. And, um, you know, after she'd gone, I was obviously here in, in the house myself and had a couple of parties, but it just didn't seem, just wasn't interested. Went out clubbing with my mates, them trying to cheer me up and stuff like that. And it just wasn't happening for me. It really just wasn't happening. And there was one there was one day at work, this is when it gets a little bit serious now, you guys, you know, if... if all that drunken madness beforehand wasn't. Um, I remember, you know, I was working in Inverness down the coast, about three quarters of an hour away, and um, I remember leaving work. And I drove up onto the A9, which is the flyover past Inverness. You know, goes it goes north right down to Glasgow, and whatnot. And I remember sitting there and thinking, I'm sitting here at what. I'm a young lad. I've got a suit on. I've got a car that I'm sitting in just now that's got less than a thousand miles on the clock. I've got bikes, I've got a car, I've got my own house. And I just sat there and thought, I am so unhappy. I'm losing it all as well. I think I'm losing it. You know, I think I'm losing all this stuff. I think my job could be at risk here. If my job's at risk, my house is at risk. Everything's at risk. And I just, I think after those years with Sharma, I just didn't know what to do. And the strangest moment I think I've, I've ever experienced came over me, where I thought, how easy would it be to drive really fast, cross over in the oncoming lane and just smart, just just for it to be over, with no pain, no nothing. And that's how I was sitting there thinking this this was getting really serious. And the funny thing was when when I'd, I look back on it now and I still look back on it was that I didn't even have a thought for my family or anything like that at all. I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to to just do it, you know. But you know, as I was sitting there, I was thinking, how how am I not happy? You know, how am I not happy? I'm sitting here in a fantastic car and look at my house and everything. And if I was to lose all that, I don't think it would even matter. I'd still be unhappy. And I think that was the scary point. I was saying, why am I so unhappy? So as I sat there, you guys, I just thought to myself, you know, when was the time? You know, when was that time in my life where everything made sense and was happy and everything was great? And it was after I gave my life to the Lord. You know, and, uh, you know, I was like 9, 10 years old, 11, 12, 13, as I, as I went on, you know, I, I had that, I had that happiness, you know, and I really thought I could do both, you know, I could have the happiness and God and all that sort of stuff, and the, the drink and the girls and, and all that sort of stuff, you know, and that just didn't happen, you know, but when, when I realised that, when I was sitting there realising that, I thought to myself, I'm going back to God, I am going back to God. So again, a long story short for this little segment, you guys, but um, unbeknown to me, not having seen Sharon for a while, she'd actually been attending church and she'd given her life to the Lord. And at that same time, quite independently, I'd come back to God at that same time. It was very strange indeed. Sharon had given her life to the Lord. She she was a real changed person already. I was back what, what I sort of knew, you know. And before long, you guys got back together started dating we were obviously living in different places you know I, I rented this place out and went back to uh, mum and dad's you know and, and got my room for a bit and then we actually started dating 
and we weren't um, doing what men and women normally do when you're when you're in that sort of situation. But um, you know, I was actually going across. We were having dates. I was going away home. We're kissing on the doorstep and all this sort of stuff. You know, it was, it was really quite strange. You know, and we were getting along, and we were chatting and speaking away until later on at night and you know and, and just all these great things it was almost like the things that we should have done instead of getting moving in together sort of straight away you know and guys again the long story short six months later we were married this was 2002 six months later that was us married and uh, the rest history you know we're, we're still together now you know which is it's just pretty amazing and people were sh shocked they were absolutely shocked that we were we were actually getting on so well when we got married, just about everyone just thought, this isn't going to last, you know, this isn't going to work, this is just another, you know, idea that's going to fall apart after three months, you know, once the honeymoon's done. But boy, oh boy, I mean, from then on, you guys, and I'll tell you now, it's it's 2020 tomorrow night at 12 o'clock, you know, when I'm sitting here just now, our relationship's never been better. You know, it's, it's, of course you have your ups and your downs, that's, that's what you know, marriage is all about, you know, in, in some respect. It's certainly a lot more highs and lows, but um, it's always been better. It's, it, it's like that old life just sort of doesn't exist for me anymore, you know. But it's almost that old life that, um, you know, I draw, I draw a lot on that, you know, into the, the Tribulation Soldier storyline, because there's lots of good things, of course there were, you know, but there's a lot of bad stuff too. You know, and I suffered quite severe depression. You know, and um, you know, like like I think of that suicide was quite it was quite scary. But you know, all the stuff. You know, the girls, the party, and the drink and the drugs. You know, and the fighting, and of course you you, you lose friends, and you even have friends that die, and you know through drug abuse and and all these sort of things. You know, and that was just the kind of life I was leading. You know, and. I keep saying if I managed to do it all over again, you know, I would have, I would have went down a totally different road, you know, I'd, you know, while all my mates, some of my mates were at university and they're nice, you know, doing this and doing that and the next thing, you know, and all I was doing was drinking, just drinking and drinking and drinking, playing pool, drinking, playing pool, drinking, sleep with her, sleep with her, you know, and, and that was my life, you know, and like I said, you know, I thought that would change when, you know, I settled down with Sharon and it was actually worse. <laughs> it, was, it was worse. I think halfway through, I think either of us would have been glad just to be single, you know. But we loved each other, you guys, and, you know, couldn't explain why we loved each other so much, but yet we couldn't be together. That's what I always sort of refer to as the old life, you know. And boy, if I thought I'd experienced some stuff, you know, beforehand, uh, you know, being a Christian and moving into that, boy, I'd, I'd seen nothing yet as far, you know, as, as far as I was concerned. And of course, I knew very, very early on that same year that we got married that I was called to the Christian ministry. And it took about seven years before I was actually set forward to preach and teach. And it's another story for another day. But during that time of training and learning, boy, I did really experience some stuff. I really experienced such stuff, you know, and especially training to be a pastor, you know, and, and being sort of introduced to helping people that have been you know, suffered abuse or divorce and you know, various things like that I'd never really seen it up close and personal like that you could speak about it when you're out and about drinking you know folk open up when they've got a drink and all the rest of it but here you are in what I call reality you know the, the, the cold light of day and just seeing how damaged people were and, and how you know just how many people in life it doesn't matter what they look sort of face to face the kind of stuff they've been through and this is what you're being called to help to be a, a part of that to help them get past things like that you know and this threw up countless situations countless moments that i thought i'd never be in as a person but this sort of christian life sort of provided that you know it kind of gives such a unique take on life you know because a lot of the times you guys it just it depends what kind of church you're a part of but the one we were a part of especially at first was very raw you know the emotions were raw you know people were very open about who they were and what they'd been through and just the things i learned you know and, and the things that people have had, had to overcome just absolutely mind-boggling to me you know but I, that, I think that's where I picked up that sort of thing. But I just, all I wanted to do was start helping people. That's where that began, and that's just the way it carried on. 
and it just threw up so many situations and still does <laughs> it still does you know that it never ends you never you get never get surprised and it's funny when you get to this sort of time I've, I've never really experienced this before but when people tell you things about their life and stuff you know it, you don't get surprised you know you really shouldn't look surprised when somebody says something like that anyway but it just doesn't surprise you anymore you know and that's quite a sad fact that's that's quite a shame but um you know when you're when you're a christian when you're a christian pastor you've got that belief i still have that belief you know that you've got the answers that you can help and uh, that in itself just threw up so many different you know situations and circumstances so i, I mean i could never name names obviously complete confidentiality you know and um, but you know a lot of these situations from what I'd call my sort of old life and of course the, the Christian life and I mean even lately you guys you know goodness me I've been I've been awful now for two and a half years I've been through two surgeries where I almost died sort of both times and I think all I've either been in is hospital or rehab <laughs> and that in itself but it gives you this I mean I would never share things in the books that people haven't said yeah it's okay you can share that and it'll never be traced back to them. But that's the way I kind of write. And this is where we sort of come from when it comes to using our own experiences. I'm surprised every time I read the books where I can see people in it and I can see myself in it from these real situations. You know, and it's not just about sharing about divorce and, and intimacy problems and, and all these sort of different things. It's actually given the answers as well, you know. And I think that's the, the part that I sort of really hope to push in with when it comes to experiences. It's not just sharing this really bad things or this really amazing things or these great successes, but it's actually showing these things and the outcome and how to get there and see the results, you know. And, uh, you know, I really hope that shines through in the Tribulation Soldier, you know. You know, although the Tribulation Soldier, for the most part, is about these armoured soldiers, you know, these elite armoured soldiers and stuff like that, you know. And it's set in, you know, the late end times and, you know, the world's a very different place and stuff like that, you know. But guys, you know, fear is still fear, wherever you go. It doesn't matter what, you know, race you're from, what country, you know. Fear's just fear, lust is lust. It's all the same, you know. You know, it all has the same causes and effects, you know, and... You know, and really, the amount of people have said to me, I'm not a very well-travelled person, but someone, a few folk have said to me, you know, wherever you go in the world, people are just people. You know, and I, and I hang on to that. I think, yeah, people are just people. And, you know, it's like I said, you know, fear is fear. It's, it, fear is the same for me as it is for some other person, you know. And if I can inject those things into the Tribulation Soldier Sea and give the, the remedies to these things, the point... To, you know, it would just be absolutely tremendous for me. It would be such a great outcome. And like I said, you guys, you know, I would I would never use various situations. I would ever get back to, to anyone else, you know. It's all mixed in totally together. Hopefully, you know, nobody would ever be sort of seen in these sort of things, you know. But I see it, you know. I see quite a lot of that in myself as well, you know, the, all the, the different things that some people sort of face and, and sort of go through, you know. And like I said, you guys, you know, it's it's not all bad, you know, it's not all, you know, all these horrible things, it's great success as well, you guys, you know, major things like, you know, getting married and, and having children and what that's all about, what it's like and, you know, finding real intimacy with each other and all that sort of stuff, you know. And of course you get the entertainment as well, it's a military series, of course, so, you know, you get the military operations and the theatres of war and... You know, all the different things that go with that, which is just really, really enjoyable, all right? So, guys, back to the sort of thread of this uh, this particular video, you guys, you know. I just really wanted to share that as, as briefly as I could, you know, about just my life in sort of general and the, the things that I've been through. I know there'll be many people who will just relate so much to all the, you know, most of these things, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's things that a lot of people go through, you know. But like I said, you guys, you know, this is, this is what I wanted for the Tribulation Soldier series. So again, I just thought, no, I'm not going to read anything, nothing, not even what we'd call secular books or Christian books or whatever, just nothing. I just want to go with whatever's in my imagination, just just go with it and go with that. And of course, of course, you know, there's films and TV and stuff that uh, influence you in such a way and fill your imagination up a bit, you know. But just to try so much to make this uh, so pure and authentic, you know, to really try and 
have real situations, real outcomes. And that's been really important. So guys, thank you so much for sitting and listening to me just rabbit and on, which I normally do. You know, like I said, I don't really do rehearsals for these sort of things or take notes or anything. I just prefer, you know, I just prefer just to, to let it all sort of come out the way that it is, you know. I used to do that with preaching and uh, still do it with preaching and, and uh, teaching and stuff like that. And do it with writing, I do it with these videos, you know, I just, I just don't know any other way, you know, so... I hope you enjoy and of course um you know i do have quite a strong scottish accent so i say again you know i really have to try and dull it down which takes a little bit of concentration so apologies if i sort of trip over my words a little bit here and there for now guys thank you so much again guys you know if you want to know more about the tribulation soldier again www.thetribulationsoldier.com go to our home page and you'll see the site map video it um, should be on the right hand side if you're not a mobile just scroll down and, and you'll see it there and it'll explain a little bit about the tribulation soldier the uh, surrounding social media and the kind of schedule of posts and videos that we share you know so guys we really hope you enjoy that and i really do hope you enjoy the youtube channels as well you know you'll get to see me doing motorbike vlogs and scottish castle tours diy you know cars bikes and boats and um, we've got our kids only youtube channel now of course for Barney family fun for David and Emily, you know, so there's loads of stuff on there, like quad biking and canoeing, and David's got a, a, the beginnings of a model city and stuff like that, you know, so it's it's really coming together, you know, but a um, little bit of an uncertain future, but, you know, we'll just keep on pressing on. So listen, guys, for now, listen, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll be doing a few more of these uh, videos. I'd like to share a little bit about the mil points and military and about the characters and just a few other things, you know, that sort of sign the Tribulation Soldier as a, as a bit of an intro to the, to the series. So again, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching.